Welcome to the Sideline Live podcast. Subscribe for more episodes and follow our social media at the Sideline Live. We'd love to hear from you. On episode 14, I'm delighted to be joined by Dublin senior footballer and seven-time All-Ireland winner, Johnny Cooper. On this episode, we had a brilliant chat about all things high performance, his pre-game routine and his new page, Be Unrivaled. I hope you enjoy. Hi Johnny, thanks a million for coming on the podcast. Thank you, um, and well done to you. I know you do uh, have been doing lots of great work, so uh, appreciate all your work, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thanks a million, appreciate that. First of all, congratulations, six in a row. What an achievement! Yeah, it's been uh, very different, obviously, for everybody, uh, and in terms of the sporting side of things, 2020 uh, will it happen? Won't or it will happen? It won't happen. Um, it did happen, and. Um, very pleased for it to happen in the first instance or be involved and then obviously um Dublin end up being successful in the end so extra pleasing albeit we didn't have people there but um hopefully those people watching those that 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 do support Dublin that is but people watching um were able to to watch from their own homes um, and I know there are lots of people cheering against us as well so look, that's part of parcel but yeah um thanks a million uh, it's been an enjoyable few weeks and you know we're we're looking at 2021 season straight away so that's that's always useful to turn your attention pretty quickly and uh and get going again brilliant uh, i'm interested to, to talk to you about your preparation and you know uh, i think bernard brogan called you a, a process ninja i think it was in his book i'm interested to hear as well has your preparation or maybe pre-game routine changed at all over the years kind of starting back to your first Earl ireland um a couple of years ago yeah, it probably has. Um, quantify it for you, maybe like 30, 40 percent uh, in all sorts of different ways. So initially coming on, I came on and uh, joined the senior football squad in 2012, which which Mayo bet us that year. Um, no, I didn't play or wasn't involved. But And then 2013, I played and i and, um, lucky enough to be involved um, uh, kind of ever since. So in terms of preparation, yeah, it probably has. Um, you know, naturally enough, things evolve. Um you know things like analysis that that evolves in terms of you know how to do it can you do it a little bit quicker there's always new progressions in strength and conditioning and and new ideas and new coaches um with, with different exercises and so on nutrition likewise I, I think everything kind of evolves and the the science if you like behind it um, naturally enough evolves too so you go with that and then I think you know, from a just a preparation point of view, you're you're in a you're in a room essentially, or you're within a group that has, you know, 34, 35, 36 other um, athletes amongst you, and then you have all sorts of expertise and medics and coaches and uh, coaches with specialization uh, from a defensive or an offensive point of view. So I think that then kind of throws it goes into the mix and your preparation. You start to see different things or. What happens, what I find myself doing an awful lot is looking at um, uh, people that play in the same position as me on the team and that gives you little bits of insights. Um, I would say probably, you know, I, I, and the answer is everything kind of has changed from a preparation point of view, but I'd say maybe 30, 40% in particular um, in terms of in where it's at. And preparation is... And the, the enjoyable thing, depending on what way you're looking at, it, it's 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 a never ending uh, chase, uh, which is part and parcel, and that's one of the the aspects I enjoy most. That just because you won in 2020 or you, you played in 2020, there's there's no right that you'll you'll do the same um, the, the following season. So you have to go back and you find and talk to people and have conversations. So all in all, it, it's a journey um, that we've been on, and uh, it's it's an enjoyable one as well as say getting after how can you be better in all sorts of different ways absolutely and kind of chatting then from your point of view is there anything in particular you would do before a game i know music is a big part of a lot of players and visualization has become really popular um the last couple of years yeah d- definitely if you think of the roadmap it, into a given game and you, you might have like we had this year a uh, week and um, just from one game to the other or you might have two or you might have a bigger gap so I always work my way backwards uh, from a from a given uh, game date or game time. So, what do you need to do? What what position do you need to be in? You know, walking out of um, the dressing room out to the pitch, and then work your way back. Where should you be? Jumping onto the bus, and then your meal and the sleep the night before, and the strength conditioning or the the um, 
the on pitch work that you need to do the two or three days. So I just work my way backwards um, in, in terms of what I would do pre game routine. There's not massive amounts of highlights in it. It's pretty much just get the, the basics right in terms of knowing my role if I if I'm lucky enough to be playing from a from a tactical tactical and a technical point of view. And um, it's obviously being in the tough physical conditions that includes your 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 kind of normal sleep um, and nutrition habits and patterns. And then, as you mentioned there, uh, lots of people listen to music will be a big part in terms of trying to get myself up to the 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 right arousal state. So that's obviously important. You don't want to go in too much and you don't want to go in too little. You're trying to get the balance. And I think that in itself is, is something that you figure out as you pick up more experience. But probably music is the only um, slight difference that, that I might have that maybe the next person um, may not have. I think lots of lads do listen to music, but whether they use it just to, to fill the, the ear space or they're actually using it for a purpose. But as I said, mine is probably to get myself up a little bit for the game uh, in terms of making sure I have the right energy and, um, and that type of thing. So you have no crazy superstitions at all? No, no, I have no uh, uh, lucky top or lucky uh, socks or anything like that. Um, I just try, you know, use my diary and things like that, make sure I have all my preparation done and, if I'm confident that the the week sort of week ha, has gone to plan, then I guess the the performance side of it, or the going out to the pitch side of it to play the game, is actually the really enjoyable part. Although it's it's obviously massively challenging, and um, you don't always get what what you're intending to 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 do out of the game, and from a personal point of view. But um, yeah, no, nothing crazy or nothing too uh, too out there, unfortunately. <laughs> and in terms of then you know you're you're walking out to the pitch you do your warm-up usually there's there's eighty two thousand people there on on our final day how do you stay focused and in the moment uh during the game and during the warm-up yeah it, it it's um it's funny uh, in some ways and that there's obviously a massive amount of people normally there and when you're the first thing when you run out from the tunnel you're hit it's you hit almost with that wall of energy wall of noise wall of electricity so that bounces into you and in some ways you're trying to harness that energy to fuel you not only in a small way but fuel you a little bit in terms of making sure that you know in the in the 20 minutes time or 25 minutes time whatever it might be that when the ball is thrown up that you're you're really and i wouldn't say up for it but you're really bang on the money in terms of you just have the right amount of energy in you you know your role you have clarity there um, you're trying to negate a, a, a threat if that's what your job is and as a defender for example or you're trying to make the right runs for a, a goalkeeper or whatever it might be um, so in terms of the warm up you're, you're obviously trying to physically get there and mentally you're trying to just fine tune the last couple of things and then also um, obviously then from a technical point of view you're practicing your skills so there's still you know 10-15 minutes to, to make sure that you know if you're kicking the ball your head is down or you're striking it from the right place on your boot or whatever it might be. So it's obviously a 20 minute period before the game um, to, to get yourself up to the pace of what a, a given game is normally. Um, and then after that, you try to enjoy it a little bit because I guess they pass by so quickly um, in terms of the, the occasion, albeit you, you don't play the occasion, but you do try to enjoy it a little bit. You know, you're typically anyway, your supporters or your family or friends are there watching. So, you're obviously trying to do your very best. So I personally will be only a small bit now, but, but cognizant or aware that um, kind of they're watching and I guess they're the reason why you're there in the first place. So you're trying to do that justice as well. Mm-hmm. It's like um, Jack McCaffrey. I think he got a lot of stick for, for enjoying the moment. He was smiling uh, around the parade a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, he tends to smile a lot. And th- th- this is the thing, isn't it? Like, I mean, it takes... It takes all sorts. It takes people that are a little bit more serious. It takes people that are a little bit more happy-go-lucky. It takes that person that's in the middle. It takes the analytical. It takes the, the stronger, the, the smaller, the tall. You know, and, and that's the beauty of teams uh, because if you're all like me or all like Jack or all, you know, you need that diversity um, of behavior and of thought and of talent and skills and whatnot. So, um yeah, Jack brought his own uniqueness and, and, and characteristics to the table and uh, looking up to have played with him for a few years. So uh, I've seen them firsthand and uh, what what a person and what a player, I guess. Uh, and you never know, we might you never know, we might see him back at some point if if uh, 
if he feels up to it. Yeah, fingers crossed. Kind of chatting about the team for a few minutes. Dublin are well known for having this kind of approachable environment. I, I know maybe that wasn't always the case. How was this sort of created and how can other teams and maybe organisations recreate this for their own their own um, employees or teammates? Yeah, um, there's obviously some specific programs of work that take place um, under any manager. You know, I've been involved with um, Pat Gilroy, Jim Gavin, and, and now Desi Barrett from a senior point of view. So I think under the given leadership at a particular time, um, they naturally enough bring their own thoughts, their own ideas, their own different, um, I guess, concepts that, that they're looking to employ um, or impress upon. Uh, from their from their onto their players, if you like. So, um, I think under those three managers in particular, um, you see all sorts of different things. I would be able to pinpoint one, or you know, was it this over here? Or was it this particular activity? Or was it this? I think it all kind of comes into the mix, you know. And, and things like there's obviously on pitch development, but I think there's leadership development and there's team development and behavioural um. Um, development and so on so all of the above would have been um, I guess put into the mix at various different stages by all of our coaches and managers so that's the first thing that I'd say is that the leader in some way sets the pace um, or in our case the manager sets the pace and sets the tone and they introduce certain things and then I guess over the last couple of years um, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of experience now within the group people that um, have been around for a number of years years who have been successful um, individually and on a collective basis they have as we mentioned Jack already their own uniqueness and, and skills and different day jobs that the players all bring to the mix and I think that that then when you have kind of a, a pace set from the top and then you have a group of guys that um, or girls or whatever it might be that are willing to put in their their thoughts and you know be a little bit vulnerable uh, obviously be committed to the cause I think then you can start to see some traction uh, and I, I think there's, a, there's, there's also something I should note and that there's a bit of luck associated with this as well and um, you know Dublin have been successful but at the same time there's been very small and fine margins in some of them cases so I would say there's a bit of luck and I think the more you win the more it becomes a habit um, and if you like it's it's a bit of an addiction for want of a better word and um, you know there's lots you do and you do well and then on reflection no different to any other year on reflection when you're writing your notes in your diary you're saying I could have done that or was my approach so there's always bits of fine tuning I think that's the beauty of this um, particular time or, or, or team just to maybe go back and you know always be hungry and be curious for for what what more can you do or could you have done that better and the answer is, is in most cases and um, anyway yeah you could have done that better so mm-hmm. that's probably what 2021 will all be about how can you do it better Mm-hmm. that's really interesting and it's it's like the player have to ha- the players and the or like the teammates and the teams and the organizations have to have that attitude of of being hungry as you said and willing to learn and look back on what they did and always looking to improve yeah definitely I, I think you know that's I guess curiosity or openness um is I think a great characteristic for a, a person or a competitor or a teammate to- having first forms if they're open and if they're kind of pushing and proactive who can I talk to what course can I do what book can I read like this now what conversation can I have with somebody I think if they're open and willing I think that's the first kind of um, step along the way I think as I mentioned already being vulnerable you know not everything is going to be you know where you thought it would be and you know you won't often get what you want or um, you know, people often view failure as um, as feedback and just some, something that you should should take uh, and, and go and, and try to do again. So, I think that curiosity and being open, uh, and then being a little bit vulnerable, being a little bit kind of out there um, w- w- with yourself, but also with others, is also helpful in terms of progression. And um, you know, as I said, looking for those gains because it, they don't come easy. That's the important thing, I guess, as well. They don't come without work. They don't come without trade-offs. There is obviously sacrifices, but I think on the other side of that sacrifice, um, potentially anyway, there's obviously great rewards to be had from a personal point of view uh, and also from a team or organization, um, organizational point of view as well. So I guess, again, it's the never-ending kind of cycle of 
who can I got talk to? How can I improve? Who has the answers to the question? Because I guess somewhere, uh, someone somewhere has the answer to what the question that you, that you want answered. Sometimes you know the question and sometimes you haven't stumbled upon that question yet. So I guess that's always ahead and that's always kind of the reach ahead. And talking about that, having that curiosity, that's something you've really taken advantage of. And I know you've you've gotten a really unique opportunity to visit, uh, I think it was a couple of rugby teams. What were the biggest takeaways from those experiences and those trips? Yeah, I, I have been incredibly lucky. So, so come that, um, with this particular, uh, I guess, playing for Dublin, has come a number of opportunities. So I've been um, to visit lots of different teams uh, from a sporting point of view, your Munster, your Leinsters, um, Saracens in the UK, um, some cultural exchanges with some NFL, or sorry, some AFL teams in Australia, uh, Richmond, who are the, the the champions down there, amongst some others. So, I guess the first thing you're going in and you're saying, "How can I learn?" And you have your notebook, and then your your eyes are wide open, so you're you're just trying to spot as much as you can. What is he doing? What times? Uh, what's their language? What's their body language? how are they interacting with each other? So I guess you're kind of just waiting and seeing what comes to the fore. Um, in terms of then just some some highlights, I guess the first thing and we mentioned a different way a moment ago was just how open they are, um, how curious they are about your background, uh, what sport do you play, what has your experience been, how have you dealt with? So I guess from there, if you have somebody that's like myself or anyone that does do the cultural exchanges um, from time to time that you're obviously going with an open mindset but they're actually coming back and I would say to the place that I've been that's from the the, the head coach um, in all cases the head coach um, to, the, to the to the medics to the physios to the SNCs to the players themselves so I guess there's a, there's a there is a um, kind of a clabber of nature to it all even though you, you don't know lots of these people or only met them that day so um, but yeah, probably being open, uh, de- them being open, I, I would say, um, is probably the main learning and uh, not always surprising, but at the same time, because they're all professional, you, well, I did anyway, you think maybe they might be a little bit different, but at the end of the day, they're not, they're just looking for gains and they're just looking for, I, I guess, to be the best they can possibly be. So it, it's not a surprise, it shouldn't be a surprise, but I guess in some ways it was because um, they're professional um, or they're in, in terms of what they do, they, their day job. Absolutely. So they were looking for a couple of your secrets, were they? Yeah, they, they were disappointed and it was a very short <laughs> conversation. But um, yeah, they were, they were. So I, I had to deflect and had to, uh, yeah, but pe- like people like, um, just as, as an example, yeah, like, like Owen Farrell um, in Saracens uh, went over to Saracens for two days, um, so a couple of days off work flew over to London, up to taxi up to their grounds um, uh, and out of the taxi. Anyway, watched their session and then all of a sudden the next thing I know, I'm in a cafe 20 minutes down the road with Owen Farrell for an hour and a half, two hours talking about all sorts of different things and that that, that type of thing. Um, you know, this is the captain of England at 25 or 26 and obviously has done lots since then and, and for me, a massive role model and, and that type of thing. So, you know, you obviously get a bit of a bounce from that. You're going, okay, well, maybe not that I, I didn't believe I had something to offer, but I was going there very much with a, what can I pull into me to help me or to help my teammates? Whereas I guess um, he had kind of the same and I'm not surprised, but uh, given his level of performance, but he had the same kind of thing. So I guess little small things like that and keeping it, and I know Owens Barrow, Andy, um, Andy Farrell is head of our Irish team. So little connections and Owen's younger brother actually plays GA here in Dublin, funny enough. Okay. So little, little small connections. Um, so, so even things like that, not all, it wasn't all to do with, you know, leadership and uh, captaincy and so on. It was actually some other just human uh, elements of the conversation too. Deadly, that's really cool. And then kind of chatting about developing habits and routines. I heard a quote recently, it was uh, thoughts become words, words become action, action become lifestyle. That was from Patrick Beverly. I want to kind of get your take on developing habits and, and sort of that self-discipline to keep the, to develop that habit into the routine. Yeah, well, like ta- and particularly nowadays, I, I guess, particularly under the magnifying fine grass of COVID and that the walls in some cases are the pressure seems to be getting greater and greater on people 
you know, be it um, you have kids at home or be it maybe some people are out of work or uh, from a health point of view, some people have suffered or the close to close them. So, so I guess thoughts are always kind of, your mind is a, obviously an incredibly powerful thing and that it can assist you and enable you to do so much, but also at the same time, conversely, it, it can play tricks on you sometimes. So I think from a thoughts point of view and there's dedicated work that you can do, you know, mindfulness, uh, keeping a diary, reflecting on things, you know, getting, um, um, honest feedback, that type of thing. So you can assist your mind and your mindset to kind of help you or enable you to get into the space that you want to get to or to form the habit that you'd like. So I guess understanding your mindset and the power of it, um, both positively but also negatively, is important. And then from there, I guess from a habit formation point of view, or certainly from my experience, you're just trying to form or figure patterns out. So in a very simplistic way, because sports in lots of ways is simplistic you're looking to uh, achieve success or to win a trophy or whatever it might be you have your by and large you have your timeline mapped out for you and you know as a competitor as a player that i need to go to the gym and i need to sleep and i need to eat and i need to do my analysis and so on so from that point of view your thoughts are very much just clarity on your thought okay where does my attention need to be on a given day or on a given task if i'm training or out the pitch whatever it might be and then, so if you have clarity on what you're looking to do or where you're looking to go, that then starts to form some patterns. And then from a, from a, um, from a neurological point of view, those patterns then kind of become a little bit harder, a little bit more formed. Um, and that kind of then from there gives you then the actions or the behaviors of the day-to-day, um, what, what you actually see people doing. So um, I, I guess thoughts are important. Um, in terms of the first step to enabling, as you said, thoughts into, you know, even from a flow point of view, thoughts into words, and then how you're speaking to people, then over a period of time, uh, your body language become behaviors, and then those behaviors, when done often enough, become your habit. And then the, the last one for me is the habit. The, the habit over time then becomes your value, and then becomes a value or a set of values that you have. So I guess thoughts, words, behaviors, habits, and values are kind of that cycle I would see it um, or have experienced the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, I'll pause on that one, but uh, very interesting space. Uh, lots to it from a neurological point of view. Uh, but I guess that has been, by and large, uh, some, of, some of that uh, answer has been my experience the last few years. Mm-hmm. And talking about building all these tools, confidence is something that's that's really big for players and it's something I've definitely struggled with. Can you kind of give maybe a snippet or maybe tips on how players and other people, not specific to sport, can build that confidence and that self-belief? Yeah, well, the first thing I would say is finding out and I appreciate the, the younger you are, the more difficult this is to answer in terms of have a concrete answer, but finding out a purpose or a why. Um, so where would you like to go? Okay, I'd like to be in this company in six, seven, eight years time. Or I'd like to be CEO. Or I'd like to be playing for this team. Or whatever the, the, I guess, end goal uh, might be. And then from there, you're trying to, I guess, work your way backwards or you're trying to then say, okay, well, if I'm now 15 or 16 or 17 years of age, what do I need to do? Okay, I need to do my academia to give me an opportunity to get the CAO points to get into the course that I'd like to do, which then hopefully would lead me um, into opportunities. I, I would think that lots of the, the confidence or self-belief comes or, or you can uh, root cause, um, root cause it if you like, and have a look at your preparation. Um, and you'll know, and I know this, and I know you're studying hard yourself at the moment. So if you have the necessary work going into an exam, you'll feel a little bit more confident that, you know what, if any of those questions come up, I'll be able to, to answer them all quite well. But then conversely, and I've definitely experienced you go into it underprepared and you're going, I really hope this one question comes up because that's pretty much the one that I know um, or I should have known three or four, but I only know one. So I think that confidence and self-belief, um, not, not not in full, but is drawn from the preparation that you do. And I then, I then think um, as you go and as you get more experience and as you get more learning and you figure out the world, uh, for want of a better way of saying it, a little bit more, you start to then know, okay, well, this is what makes me good. Okay, I'm not good at what that guy or girl does over there, but this is what makes me good. And then when you have a little bit more, I guess, um, of a grounding in that area, you'll know that I don't need to be Johnny over there because I'm this person over here and this suits me absolutely fine. This is what I'm good at. And to be honest, I probably struggled. I resonate with what you're saying. 
I uh, probably struggled myself with that, particularly when I was 16, 17. You know, I'm not the biggest guy from a, from a physical point of view in the world, um, but, but I thought I needed to be bigger from a sporting point of view. And to be honest about it, I remember this very vividly, and I'll finish by, by with this example, is uh, Pat Gilroy telling me in, I think it was 2011, 2012, I can't remember, but it was my first year was 2012, but it was in one of the, the years where I asked him for feedback and he said, you just need to get a little bit bigger. And I was uh, 74 kg when I told me that, and I'm 76 now if you like. So I, I, I don't personally think those two extra kg made a big difference. Um, so the point I'm trying to make is yourself and when you're becoming a little bit more okay with who you are, the skills that you have, because when you do, if you are to take the time to write them down, you'll, you'll come out with a full list of I am great at, and you'll have a full page. Of course, you'll have things that you're not so good at, mm-hmm. but but who doesn't? So um, yeah, I'll, I'll pause on that one, uh, but I'm happy to go into any more um, if there's any further question on it. Yeah, that's interesting about having that list and kind of writing down what you're good at because it's so, like, as you said, it's so quick to focus on the negative and what you don't have. Whereas if you realize, you know what, I actually have a lot that I've a lot of really good attributes or characteristics that I, you know, instead of just focusing on what I don't have and what I need to get. Yeah, no, definitely. And so many people, particularly at an executive level, like sports sports is such a powerful vehicle because you know if you think about it as a player on any team it doesn't have to be an elite or a senior team but in any team you'll have a set of coaches or maybe their parents but their coaches and they bring their expertise or they read books on your behalf to make sure you have the best drills or the best preparation whatever it might be so when you think about it it's not just you that has so many powerful attributes and of course you can work on them all the time and get better so it's not only that but what you are you know, your school environment, your family have is an ability to plug that into a system that then enables you or accelerates your development and so on. So I, I think you're absolutely right. It's so easy, particularly with social media, particularly with people aspiring to be that guy or that girl over there. And as I said already, sometimes that's not a bad thing, but but it, but in many cases, people are maybe looking at slightly the wrong area or uh, it's social media followers or it's, I, I need to be a little bit more like that person whereas the reality is you can't be that person you're the only version of yourself and in my experience anyway are people that I've worked with um, or coached or come in contact with the last couple of years when you just point as you said when you just point their eyes into well what makes you great and then you start exploring that and you find really really quickly okay well tell me about that time you had a really good game and why did you have a really good, well, the preparation, I just felt really strong and I knew what I was doing. Okay, why did you feel really, I went to the gym. And when you work it all back, you'll just, it's like literally a tread um, from a, from a um, and you're just unwinding it the whole time. But sometimes, as you said, people maybe don't ask the right questions or sometimes don't have the right support uh, around them. But when they do have the right support or know the right question to ask, I think that's when uh, you can start to really develop and help others. And that's something I get a massive kick out of myself absolutely and that was something i was going to reference with we're going to chat about be unrivaled and what i noticed from the logo was you read it as be unrivaled but you can also read it as be you and that importance of being yourself and as you said get comfortable with yourself yeah like that's that's um that's on purpose i guess so i wanted something i wanted something that meant um something to me so the be unrivaled's by definition is you're out there on your own you're you have no rival you have no competitor and i appreciate that that in itself is probably uh, something you'll never get to but the concept or the definition is something that i found very powerful and then yes and well spotted was the, the b and the u the two first were something that's very important to me because a big part of my development was when i eventually realized you don't need to be that guy that's uh, really big over there you don't need to be the person that's a little bit faster what you have or your values or your background or your drivers or your um traits they're, they're so unique as it is so let's concentrate on you um, and, and that's that's something i think that's a big part of development is yes let's reference let's talk to others let's uh, do cultural exchanges but don't ever forget that you are you uh, and you're absolutely good enough. And um, it's just about maybe trying to develop, ask the right questions, get the right support. And as you said already, point your eyes into the direction that's going to assist you and not uh, restrict you. 
Absolutely. And chatting about the the ideas and you, the stuff you're sharing on the page, what's the aim with it all? Is is it to inspire the the people who are following the page to go after that? Is that kind of the aim? The, the aim for me initially, so um, at the very uh, core of all this was from a personal point of view, how could I assist myself um, to get a little bit better? As I said, that being rivaled idea or concept, can you bring it? And I try to anyway, bring it to my space, my personal activities. And then I guess from there, I, one of my kind of, one of the things I get a massive kick out of um, or enjoyment out of is assisting and helping others achieve um the success that they want to in any context, business, family, sports, job, course, whatever it might be. So from there, I just said, well, I have a story to tell. I have experiences. I've done my academia, uh, sports science undergrad, executive coaching, master's in organizational behavior and psychology and, and some other things. So why not try bring a bit of, bit of my practical experience uh, grounded in some te- uh, theoretical uh, elements in academia and put them out there, to be honest, um, messing around with it for probably a year or two before I said, you know what, I'll be a little bit vulnerable, I'll put myself out there a little bit. I don't know how it's all interpreted. I don't know if it's useful. Uh, feedback has been brilliant um, so far, but of course, uh, you can always do better. So I guess in a long-winded way, it's to assist others to maybe provide or to stimulate or provoke uh, some thoughts. And as I said, I really enjoy working with people, coaching people, helping teams, etc. So um, I get feedback from us. Some people love it. Some people have thoughts of their own and that makes, I guess, uh, it all the better in the long run. So uh, it's something that hopefully I'll continue to pursue and people um, uh, enjoy it, that is. And um, if I have, have something to tell and maybe some value to add, then, then, then all the better for somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah, please do, because I'm obviously really interested in what you're doing. I'm a really big fan of it. And I'm interested to hear, who do you, before you set up the page, who were you getting value from on social media and who was kind of giving you that information that you were looking for? It's a great question. Um, one of the hacks, actually, that before I answer the, the actual people or persons, um that, that I always or still do actually, but used to do more so um, is if you go on to like a whoever social media, someone that you that you look up to or a company or whatever it might be. And if you look into their followers, so see who they're following and all of a sudden you see, okay, there's that person over there that does the mindset work or does the, um, the mindfulness or the leadership, whatever it might be. So that's how I often bounce around and find different people or try to find different people. Uh, and from there, Probably lots, uh, probably too many to mention, but there is um, one or two. There's a guy called Michael Gervais who does um, a podcast and other things uh, uh, um, online. Found him probably five or six, year, five years ago, maybe, and um, just kind of podcasts and different things. And he's on social media and everything else, of course, now. But um, so he's definitely one who has just provoked lots of my thoughts um, or stimulated lots of thoughts in me the last couple of years and um yeah he's probably been the main one to be honest that there's obviously lots i try listen i try um just finish reading bill walsh's book there try read and different things like that but um in terms of online or podcasts anyway or some of the the content he puts out or has put out the last little while and um, michael gervais over in the states he works with the seattle seahawks um over there which is um, an nfl team as, as well so he has a, a sporting background and interest as well as organizational that's really interesting. I'll definitely be, be checking out his page. So the sideline seven is the same seven questions for every single guest. So the, the listeners can compare the answer. So I'm going to start off with question one. What is your favorite quote? Um, separation is in the preparation. I like that one. I think I might rob that, that as well. Um, best sporting event you've been to and you can choose that maybe as a fan or as a player. Um. I was across in the States one of the years to a basketball game. It wasn't a big game or anything like that, but just the overall atmosphere. It was a Miami Heat game. LeBron was actually playing and uh, it was oh, cool wow. to be there. Yeah, it was yeah. cool to be there. Uh, never been before. So uh, they, they do entertainment very, very well over there. So really enjoyed that. It's nearly more about the entertainment than the game itself sometimes. Definitely. Um, what is the biggest setback or challenge so far in your career? Um, probably been told no a few times, as in from a um, thing around 2010, 2011. So lucky enough to captain the All Ireland 
under 21 team that were successful against Donegal 2010. And then I thought, uh, wrongly, obviously, I thought kind of next natural step, i.e., 2011. Uh, would have been to be involved with the seniors, but I wasn't. And of course, they were very successful. They won the All Ireland that year. So, kind of 2011, albeit it's a massive uh, uh, learning uh, for me and probably something that has stood to me um, a lot more than anything else. But 2011, kind of being told, no, no you're not good enough, was probably the, the main one. Mm-hmm. And then, kind of on the flip side of that, what's your biggest achievement uh, on or off the pitch? To be honest, probably just being in and around the Dublin um, senior football team for the last number of years. Um, so obviously a, a massive goal growing up when you get in there for your first session and your first year and your first week. Incredibly nerve-wracking, but probably to to still be there and hopefully still adding value, that's really important to me. Absolutely. Third last question. Looking back, what advice would you give your 18-year-old self? Yeah, pr- probably just to be yourself and um, have trust um, in, in what you're doing. Um, if you have that end goal in mind, get your head down and um, work as hard as you can and just stay stay the course and stay at it because good things, I believe, in it. you get what you deserve, mm-hmm. I think, and, and good things will always happen if you're doing the right work and, and you're keeping your head down and um, staying disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, dream dinner guests and I'm interested to hear who you'd pick for this uh, it seems to be a bit of a theme to turn it into a dinner party so I think I'll allow it for this one how many am I allowed? Uh, we'll go with five we'll, we'll put a cap on it five 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 I, um, I don't even know if I have five but I could definitely uh, w- well Barack Obama is someone that I have a lot of um, I- I've follow a lot um, his, his his development the, the stage he obviously got to the the, the president of, the, of uh, the United States um, so Brack because I'm sure his charisma and for his experience would definitely be one um, from a sporting point of view one of my role models growing up was a guy in the UK called Johnny Wilkinson uh, so I, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd have to send him an invite because he was a massive influence uh, uh, for me and then I'll probably just go a tree uh, just to make it easy, but um, Steve Jobs, uh, again, somebody that I have a massive uh, interest in, obviously set up Apple and um, in his basement with uh, with friends of his and so on, So uh, and where it is now, obviously. So probably Barack, uh, Johnny Wilkinson and um, Steve Jobs. Yeah, that'd be an interesting conversation. So my final question is, if your life was a book, what chapter would this be called? Would this be called? It's a great question. Um, probably just as simple as content. Um, it's it's been uh, very rewarding. Um, lots of learning along the way, but uh, a space and a place that I've uh, I've uh, really enjoyed. So content. Yeah, I like that one. Look, Johnny, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you coming on. I want to wish you the best of luck with the dubs, with the new job in KPMG and with the page. Uh, and thanks a million again. Not not at all. And well done for all your work. You're juggling your academia and you're putting out some great value and information for people like myself to learn from. So uh, continued success to you too. Appreciate that. Thanks a million, Johnny. No problem. <laughs> A massive, massive thank you to Johnny for coming on today. Be sure to go follow his social media pages over on Instagram at Be Unrivaled and Twitter Be underscore Unrivaled. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, be sure to leave a rating and a review. And if you are interested in starting up your very own podcast, be sure to get in touch with the Primal Productions team over on Instagram at Primal Productions.